But Matthias, over to you. Uh, thank you, Esther, and a double thank you to you for the invitation to speak for EAPN, but also for the very good cooperation with you, with Lorenzo, and with Tosten in the last months, because we all share this aim to get uh, decent pay conditions and poverty proof uh, levels of statutory minimum wages. I will highlight in my short intervention some of our 10 demands in relation to the future directive. Uh, we issued last week a statement and um, there is a big, big, big overlap with uh, all what the ETUC asked and what Thorsten just brilliantly summarized, uh, what are the requests there. I will highlight points which look particularly at the persistent problem of in-work poverty, which also is obviously a key concern for our members. As we all know, there are a number of countries where there are gaps in the coverage for certain groups, especially for more vulnerable workers or precarious workers. Mateusz has given good example from Poland. And there are obviously countries where statutory minimum wages are low compared to the general wages. Also Bulgaria was an example, many others. This also means that then these workers on these minimum wages um, cannot make a, a living, that they are not sufficient to protect all workers against the risk of poverty. Both for the ETUC and for ERPN, minimum wages are an indispensable instrument to tackle in-work poverty, precarious employment conditions, help fight unfair competition, and prevent a raise to the bottom wage setting, again, in particular in lower wage economic sectors or for vulnerable workers. This is important given the persistent high number of working poor. For 2000 numbers, for 2019, these are the last numbers, we speak about 17.2 million persons, workers. That means nearly one out of 10 workers in the EU 27. And their share went up in the last decade. Overall, seven out of 10 minimum wage workers report at least some difficulty in making ends meet. And these are data from the Eurofund minimum wage annual review, where they also write that uh, despite nominative uh, substantial increases of minimum wages in the last years, still in seven EU member states, the minimum wages are below 40% of the average wage and in nine below 50% of the median wage. Um, and the EC, the European Commission in itself, in the impact assessment for the proposal for the directive, reports that in several countries, if there are improvement in minimum wages, this would help to reduce the in-work poverty by 10%. So Chihan and also uh, Teresa have given quotes. I can also add two from a meeting of people experiencing poverty in 2017, we organized that was focused on in-work poverty. The first is we need to break the myth that employment is enough to avoid poverty. And in-work poverty means always having to check prices in shops and supermarkets. And we did last year a study on the impact of the COVID pandemic. And there are also uh, this reports, for example, that uh, refers to lines at food banks due to the sudden drop or lack of income of families who had lost their jobs or had uh, to face dramatic cuts in their working time and then had to reduce, had a reduced income with increased costs. Very shortly, some of our points, demands, the first is adequate minimum wages should be considered as a basic social right for all workers. Obviously, all this needs to be reflected in the directive. Second, they should be guaranteed in all sectors of the economy. We know there are many low wage sectors, as Horeca, cleaning, retail trade was also mentioned for Germany, food industry, agriculture, and so on, personal services. And um, Improvement in the general wage levels and reductions of the shares of those in minimum wages would in particular help women, migrant workers and seasonal workers. So there are clear advantages. The third point is that adequate statutory minimum wages should be set in a non-discriminatory way and be applied to all workers, regardless of the type of employment contract or relationship, also to ensure this principle of equal pay for equal work. And this Article 6 in the current proposal of the directive only prescribes a non-discrimination and proportionality test, but still allows for variations and deductions. Thus, this needs to be amended. So no variations for specific groups or sub-minimum rates for young workers, for example, deductions of costs for protective equipment or other things should be allowed. 
And uh, we know, for example, from many studies, including from the International Labour Organization, that show that the impact on youth employment for minimum wages that increase are either zero or very small, and that some minimum wages for young people are not an effective tool for improving youth employment. It was also shown well by the Polish colleague. The fourth point is that adequate statutory minimum wages should guarantee a decent living uh, and ensure people's full participation in society. They should be poverty-proof living wages. This was also mentioned by colleagues, ensuring the health and well-being of workers, as well as employment and job quality. And the nominal value of statutory minimum wages needs to be regularly updated because again, if timely updates are made or if they are not made the other way around, then especially low wage earners will suffer first and foremost and in work poverty and income inequality will increase. So we, in, we support fully this double threshold that also uh, Thorsten has mentioned, but in the same way as he has said it, that uh, minimum wages must not be paid below this threshold of decency. And finally, a last point, a fifth point I would like to make, we also know that EU mem member states with high collective bargaining coverage tend to have a lower share of working poor and lower wage inequality. Collective bargaining across all sectors, but very importantly also for those with higher shares of vulnerable workers, for example, temporary fixed term contracts, zero hour contracts also mentioned by colleagues, must be strengthened. Insofar, the Article 4 of the directive or this proposal of the directive needs to be reinforced and improvements are urgently needed in this low wage sectors and in the social services sector. So uh, I thank you for your attention again for the very helpful cooperation that we are looking forward to continue, Esther and colleagues. Thank you. Okay.